So it all started about nine years ago, age 15. Um, I got into boxing really just to keep out of trouble and help channel my aggression. But I just fell in love with it. Um, I didn't have my first fight up until age 19, about four years later. But um, yeah, one thing led to another. I won my first fight, won the second one, which was a tough fight. And I remember I won my third one. That was my third one in a row. And that was my favourite fight or my early amateur career just because it was my first opportunity to box on a home show where all your friends and family get to come and it was just a great atmosphere and I think it reflected in my performance um, so yeah and I, I felt like I was a bit gassed <laughs> going 3-0 um, and yeah one thing led to another from there my fourth fight didn't really go to plan I'd say I beat myself physically and mentally wasn't physically prepared you know I feel like it was a humbling defeat but one I learned from Nonetheless, um, I was still proud of my first year as an amateur. I had four fights and three wins, and I was nominated Most Dedicated Boxer and Senior Boxer of the Year at my first amateur club, Phoenix, um, which was great, but still, um, still not much confidence in my ability yet. You know, it was still just I was just enjoying boxing. Um, I went down to London um, as part of my university degree and a placement, which I got to box for Fitzroy Lodge. Um, which my dad and my brother came to see me for the first time which was extra special because it was the first time any family member had seen me box um obviously prior to that my parents went to keen on boxing so for my dad to come down just meant a lot to me and things kicked on from there um went through went through some rough patches in terms of injuries but um still managed to make the novice championships where i was competing in a weight class that was above mine just because I couldn't make the weight in time due to my injury and which was 81 kilos because I'm, I'm a 75 kilo fighter middleweight and I still done quite well I got to the Midlands final I won the East Midlands um, and only well the, the Midlands final was quite close but even still just to pick up the East Midlands title was special to me because I was only 50% fit for that tournament so it just inspired me to train hard for the next tournament because if 50% fit version of me to become East Midlands champion then what could a 100% fit version of me do especially I was competing in a weight class above so yeah things just kicked on from there really so um, I remember for the next tournament the British National University Championships I just I put my own into training you know because I didn't want to leave any stone unturned and I think I was in a condition of my life I remember getting top sparring um, from people like Gary Mayer um, who's a local boxer and not who I look up to very talented so going into the tournament I had the best camp I could ever imagine and it resulted in getting a TK, TKO victories in the quarter final and the semi final and then I won in the unanimous in the final which was just was special to me because it was I call myself a national champion and it was the first tournament where I'd had no injuries there was no issues and leading up into the tournament and look what I was able to do so this is where my confidence started to grow a little bit but still it was still I was just still enjoying boxing but then I was actually starting to think that you know I could actually seriously go somewhere with this um, later on that year I um, managed to make it to the East Midlands final again and um, aiming to become two-time East Midlands champion two years in a row um, happened to be boxing um, a friend of mine, Stan Stanard, and uh, yeah, it was a close fight. Um, I lost in a split decision. Obviously, I thought I won the fight. A lot of other people thought the same, but you know, that's boxing at the end of the day, especially in the amateurs. Um, yeah, that was really a tough defeat to swallow. Um, the image is still in my head. You know what I mean? From that day, and just the, the devastation I felt. I trained so hard. Do you know what I mean? But it was such a massive turning point for me. Because um, I was almost close to quitting boxing after that tournament, um, but you know that setback, minor setback, was a setup for a major comeback. Because because I wasn't in the championships, a few weeks later I decided to go to England Talent Day. Um, I wasn't really too keen on going at first, so I sort of went there with no expectations, and it was even on my birthday as well, just to add insult to injury. Uh, and yeah, I was really surprised the feedback I got from the England coaches, which was really positive. Um, they said that I had a lot of potential and um, 
I would definitely want to watch in the future and and I had a very good chance of making the England squad so, so hence I was invited to subsequent England training camps um, in the future which were, were great and a great learning experience you know even a few months after that I was called up to Nigeria um, to try and qualify for the Rio um, 2016 games um, I was already in contact with them prior to that because I, they did invite me up to a, a trial camp for the All Africa Games that was in September 2015 that year. I didn't actually end up going um, to the trials. Um, I had my reasons, I just didn't think it was the right time. Um, and I didn't think I was ready. And I had a lot going on with my Masters case at the time. You know, it was always a dream of mine to represent my country in an international tournament so it was a massive decision for me but one that I can only look back and think what if but one that I do not certainly regret you know what I mean but I do think sometimes how amazing it would have been to you know represent Nigeria or England or Great Britain you know, at international tournaments but I guess it just was that was not the plan. So yeah, every, everything happens for a reason. So I had another two amateur bouts before the end of the year, 2015, which I both won, which was great. But you know, something was still missing. I was still contemplating quitting boxing, and I spent so much time in you know reflection and prayer to God. And I remember just asking God, like, this can't be it. I haven't come this far to quit now. You know, I just needed something new, like a new challenge, maybe a new season, maybe a new setting. So, um, a few weeks prior to that, I, I kept seeing Echo Esserman um, on my Facebook. Now, Echo Esserman was boxing for GB at the time, and so he was a hot prospect in Nottingham. Um, luckily enough, we had just sparred a few weeks before, so um, we had got talking quite a bit, you know, just back and forth messages via Facebook, and, you know, Echo was... It was a big inspiration to me because he was, you know, giving me a lot of advice and tips. And I remember at the time, even after we sparred, um, he he gave me a lot of positive feedback about my style, and my ability, and he didn't he doesn't even know how much that meant to me because at the time, you know, my confidence was was, was quite low. So um, I kept seeing videos of him training with his coach at the time, um, which is Barrington Brown, former professional boxer. We, we know him as Dan. And I remember just seeing this and thinking, oh, I need some of this. Like it was just, I remember seeing him doing all these crazy sorts of training. Like, it just, it was different, but it was just something new to me. And so I messaged Echo. I was like, Echo, you know, would your coach train me? And he said, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, he gave me his contact details, I contacted him. And let's just say after that, the rest was history, you know. Um, I could be here till tomorrow speaking about the impact that, you know, Dan and Mark, um, my other trainer, his uncle has had, not only on my abilities and skills as a boxer, but on my life, you know. Because um, they're probably unaware, but they met me at a time where Boxing wise, my confidence was very low. I didn't think highly of my abilities or my skill, even though many people kept telling me I had potential, and you know, but that didn't really mean much to me because, you know, it was potential that I couldn't see in myself. So it was just a total rebuilding job, you know what I mean? Rebuilding my skills and abilities from the ground up. And let's just say, yeah, the rest was history from then. And I just began to take training to another level and it was constantly constantly improving and you know training was hard but it was fun at the same time because it was always challenging but then so then amateur wise um i just started to fall out of love with the sport you know I uh, enjoyed some really torrid times when I went to boxing. I remember a week before the ABAs, I trained so hard. I was in great condition with Dan and I fractured my eye socket. Um, for the novice championships again, because I was still under 25, so I could still enter them. 
a few months later I got I suffered a dead leg and even when I was fit um, I remember I had four or five consecutive pullouts so it was crazy there was a period where I, I didn't actually box for about a year and a half so when I did box the first time a year and a half it was the first round in the ABAs and let's just say physically and mentally I wasn't in the best position to compete like, you know I was already thinking about the pro game so um, I lost in the first round in the ABAs and from that moment I just knew that yep yeah, it was time to go pro you know it was time to start moving up the rankings and moving towards those old titles so I'm just excited for the journey ahead and I just I can't wait you know to see what God has in store for me on this journey So if you fall off, I swear down the school Cause we all go through it, there's nothing new to it The chances are blurring, never knew what I was doing The people did screw it, as so Jewish You ain't brand newish, you acting like a music You got the kingdom so so keep cooking Don't worry about them, keep looking Just stay in your ground, keep jogging One last thing, never stop and keep on pushing You got nothing to lose